Hello, my name is Liz and I'm the adult librarian at the Belgrade Library. I'm here today to teach you about Punch Needle. Our crafter noons are generously sponsored by the Peggy Novotny Memorial Fund. Okay, let's get started. In your kit you will have an embroidery hoop, an adjustable punch needle, a wire threader, four colors of medium yarn, uh, and monk's cloth. Monk's cloth is good for punch needle because it has a very loose weave. You wouldn't be able to use just any fabric for punch needle. Um, I bought this monk's cloth online at a specialty punch needle store. Um, you can get some from Joann's, but it isn't quite as nice, but I did use some to practice on. Okay, first stretch the monk's cloth in the embroidery hoop. Put the one without the bracket underneath, put the monk's cloth on top, and put the hoop on over that. Uh, the bracket's a little hard to twist, but do your best. And the trick is to pull it as tight as possible. This will prevent the yarn from pulling out. And you can also tape the ends of the monk's cloth to prevent further fraying. Um, I was getting those little yarn pieces, cloth pieces everywhere, so I thought I'd do that. Once you have it pulled as tight as possible, you can go ahead and tighten up the bracket. All right, once you've got your cloth stretched out on the hoop, go ahead and pick a design, draw it out, and draw it out on your fabric with either a pen or a pencil or a marker. I'm using a fabric marker because it shows up really nicely. Um, and that'll give you a plan for what to do when you're punch needling. Now it is time to thread our punch needle. So you're gonna take your wire threader, um, and in the end without the sticker, you want to stick it in the pointy end of the punch needle and thread it through until it comes out the butt end there. There's a little loop, so take a piece of yarn, put it in that little loop, pull it through a couple inches, and pull the other end out until you see it, and then take the wire off so they're separated again. Then you want to take your threader again and put it on the back side of the hole on the pointy end of the punch needle. Thread that yarn through the wire again and pull it through one more time. Then you can put your threader aside and you have your punch needle threaded. So now you want to figure out what size loop you want on the back of your uh, fabric. These numbers correspond to how big the loops will be. A will make the biggest loop. You can see the needle is longer. D will make the smallest loop. The needle is the shortest. I'm going to use C uh, for this demonstration and you can see kind of how big the loops are on C. I used it for this example piece here. So now you want to pull the thread so there's only about, you know, two inches or so, three inches coming out the end. You want to take your monk's cloth, pick a corner, and just punch it through all the way through until the blue part touch, touches the monk's cloth. Then you want to grab the yarn from the other side, pull it all the way through, and then pull it back uh, until there's only about like an inch or so. You don't need that much. Uh, on the back side. Then you can go back to the front, gently and slowly pull it out. You can see that the opening of the hole is in the direction that I'm going to go. Poke it back through the fabric and through the other side again. So then you just want to continue pulling out and pushing it back through the fabric. You don't have to go through every single hole in the fabric. You can like skip a hole. I like skipping a hole in the middle, but then the rows are right next to each other. Um, you also want to make sure that there's no tension on the yarn on the other end. Um, this isn't like traditional embroidery where the needle and thread goes through it and then comes back in. It's actually just kind of being hugged by the fabric. Um, so you can really easily pull it out uh, and that can be the frustrating thing if, if you don't have the tension right or your monk's cloth is too loose. It'll just keep pulling out and that gets kind of frustrating. Um, so play around with it if it is coming back out. Um, another thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to pull the needle too high out. Um, that'll create 
a big loop on this side. Um, but if you do mess up, you can just pull it out, tighten the yarn back up, and then go for it again. Um, and so what I'm going to do, and what I'll suggest to you, is kind of doing an outline of the square that I'm going to do, and then kind of circling it towards the middle. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. You'll notice as I turn the fabric, I also want to turn the needle so that the opening is still towards the direction that I'm going in. up with some white and then make a little yellow sun there. Um, I did have to pull the fabric again to make it tight because punching it kind of made it loose and this is kind of hard to turn. Might be good to like drain this with pliers so it's super tight. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. So here's my finished design. I mean it's not perfect but I'm rather really happy with it. Um, I think it turned out pretty cute. I like this loopy section here. There's different ways you can finish it off. You can put it in a frame, you can sew it into a pillow. Um, I think I'm just gonna see if I can trim it and maybe hot glue it to the back uh, and just kind of keep it in the hoop itself. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this project for this month. Thank you for crafting with us.